Hello, a bit overdue, but here finally is part 8 of database design made easy. Let's talk about fifth normal form. And to do that, we will start with the same example that we used in the previous video to explain fourth normal form. A schedule for an Ask the Experts corner where every row represents a fact of the type on Monday you can ask Hugo questions about normalization. And we concluded that hidden within that uh, sentence are two other facts. On Monday you can ask Hugo questions and Hugo is an expert on normalization. However, there is even a third fact hidden in On Monday you can ask Hugo questions about normalization, which is that On Monday you are allowed to talk about normalization in the Ask the Experts corner. We didn't uh, include this fact in the previous video because in that universe of this course it was apparently not relevant. But what if it is relevant? And once more, this depends on whether or not you can reconstruct that on Monday you can ask Hugo questions about normalization from the underlying facts. He is here, Hugo is here on Monday, he is an expert on normalization and the organization allows you to talk about normalization on Mondays. So let's once more try to make the same modification as in the previous video. Let's try to remove the first row from this uh, table. Hugo does not like Mondays and so he does not want to talk about normalization on Mondays. Do we allow that? Rather, does the organization allow that or not? Once more, depends on the universe of this course. Let's say that in this universe of this course, Hugo is not allowed to be picky. So if he doesn't want to talk about normalization on Mondays, or, or in other words, if you want to remove this single row, then you can only do that by completely leaving Hugo off the schedule on Monday. And then he can't talk about execution plans either. Or you can leave Hugo available on Monday, but not allow him to talk about normalization ever during the entire conference. Or, and that is new since the previous video, the organization might not like Mondays or not like normalization and tell all the experts, no, you can't talk about normalization on Mondays. Then that doesn't only affect Hugo, but also Erin. So those are the three ways in which that top row can be removed and all of them require the removal of, in this example, one other row. Of course, if you now look at this and check fourth normal form, you might think, because the example is very similar to the previous uh, example in the previous video, that there are still um, multi-valued uh, dependencies. But that's not the case. Let's, for instance, look at the multi-valued dependency where they multi-determines the expert. Who can we talk to on Wednesday? Well, look at the data in the example, Erin. And re. Okay, but what if the organization says nobody can talk about com community on Wednesdays? Then re is no longer available on Wednesday because that was her only topic. Only Erin remains. So the experts you can talk to on Wednesday depends on another attribute on the topic. And that means that this is not a multi-value dependency. Does they multi-determine the topic then? Well, let's for this example look at Tuesday, uh, at Mondays. What topics can we talk about on Mondays? Normalization, execution plans, and query store. Okay, but what if Erin decides that she doesn't want to be an expert on query store anymore? Then only normalization and execution plan remains, so the topics available on a given day depend on another attribute, the expert. Again, not a multi-value dependency. And you can check the other four possible multi-value dependencies that same way, and you will see that none of them exist. There are no multi-value dependencies between subsets of a key in this example, and hence fourth normal form is not violated. 
fifth normal form is though because we still want to prevent users from removing that single row that on Monday you can ask Hugo questions about normalization. In this universe of discourse, with these business rules, Hugo was not allowed to be this weirdly picky. Now, when we noticed a fourth normal form violation caused by the two base facts, on Monday you can ask Hugo questions and Hugo is an expert on normalization, the a way to fix it was to create tables for those base facts. Now we have a third base fact, so it probably won't surprise you that to fix this fifth normal form violation, we need a third table to represent all the days that you can talk about all the topics, so that the organization now has the power by removing a row from this table to ban a topic on a certain day. Once you have done this, we have these three new tables, you can remove the original table and you don't lose any actual data because simply by looking at the three base tables and combining the data from there in an interesting join query, you get this original table back. So, even though the technical way to look at fourth and fifth normal form are quite different, the solution is the same in both cases. You observe that on Monday you can ask Hugo questions about normalization is not a base fact but a derived fact. You throw away the table with the derived fact, facts after creating tables for all the actual base facts. Now, Let's put this in a more technical way. So if you look in the literature, you will see that the requirements for fifth normal form are, of course, the table must already be in fourth normal form. And the second requirement, the new uh, requirement, is that there must be no join dependencies unless implied by a key. No join dependencies. What is a join dependency? Well, a join dependency exists in case you have a table that you can deconstruct into smaller parts, then throw away the original table, join back the smaller parts, and you are guaranteed to get the original table. If those conditions all hold, then this is a join dependency. And a join dependency cannot exist in a fifth normal form table. If that ha happens to be the case, the table has to be split into those smaller parts and the original table can be removed or changed into a view. <coughs> so let's once more look at the original situation. We have this ask the experts uh, corner ID and in this universe of discourse, nobody is allowed to be picky if Hugo is available on Monday and if he is an expert on normalization and if normalization is an allowed topic on Monday, then you can ask Hugo questions about normalization on Monday. So we have the table here and we can deconstruct it into smaller parts. And you can check if you want to the population of each of those tables that you see on the screen is simply created by doing a query from the base table with a distinct, of course, to remove the duplicates. And then you get these three tables. Now, that was the first step of the join dependency. Now we throw away the table and then we join back the tables, we, smaller tables we created, and we get this result back. You can verify that yourself once more. If you look at the population of the three smaller tables and you join them, you will get the table on the left hand side, which is exactly the original table. In this case, it is guaranteed. There is a join dependency. The left hand side table would violate fifth normal form and hence your schema should only contain the three right-hand tables. Again, the left-hand table could be the output of a report. You could even create it as a view if you need it more often. It should not be a base table. So 
what about the alternative universe of discourse? The universe of discourse there where even though Hugo is available on Monday, even though he is an expert on normalization, and even though the organization allows you to talk about normalization on Mondays, you can st still cannot ask Hugo questions about normalization on Mondays. Again, he doesn't like Mondays, and apparently he doesn't like normalization either. So in this case, where the top row can be removed, let's once more check whether we still have a joint dependency or not. Now, if I split the left-hand side table into the three smaller tables and once more create a population by doing a query on the left-hand side table, then you will get the same results as in the other universe of this course. Because even though Hugo doesn't want to talk about normalization on Monday, he is still available. You can ask about execution plans. And even though Hugo refuses to talk about normalization on Mondays, it's still one of his expertises. Just return on Tuesday. And even though Hugo doesn't want to talk about normalization on Mondays, it's still an allowed topic. And Aaron is available and will happily help you with those questions. So all those rows are still in the smaller tables. And that is the same population. Now, when this is the same population on the right hand side, it won't surprise you that if I throw away the left hand side table, join everything together, we get this population again. And as you see, the row that was removed because Hugo is picky is now there. All of a sudden, he's forced to talk about normalization on Mondays, despite his dislike for that topic on Mondays. We allowed him to refuse it, but once we applied the joint dependency test, he was suddenly forced to talk about it again. Or, in other words, splitting the left-hand side table into its three smaller parts and joining them back together is not guaranteed to return the same results. In fact, we added a row to the table that shouldn't be there. So there is no joint dependency in this case, and the table on the left-hand side does not violate fifth normal form. We need it to represent the fact that Hugo is or is not picky about normalization on Monday. So that means that basically the three tables on the right-hand side are now ne not needed, because each of them can be derived from the table on the left-hand side. And that is the only table that you should keep. So, to summarize this video, we have learned that a table is in fifth normal form if it is already in fourth normal form and there are no joint dependencies unless implied by a key. And once more, a different way to look at fourth and fifth normal form in combination is to check what are the base facts that cannot be derived from other facts and what are the facts that can be derived from other facts. The answer to that depends on the rules of your universe of discourse. Like I said, is Hugo allowed to be picky or not? And is the organization allowed to be picky or not? If all, uh, and if you check all that, then you just keep the tables for the base facts and you remove the tables for facts that can be derived because you can always reconstruct the population of those tables by joining or query, uh, querying from the base tables. Once more, as always, fifth normal form is a definition on the table level, and you can say that your data model is in fifth normal form is if every table is in at least fifth normal form. So that's it. That is all you need to know to understand fifth normal form. The next video will probably not surprising be on sixth normal form. My plan, but you know how my plans work out nowadays, my plan is to release this video in December 2024. Fingers crossed that I make it this time. Of course, as always, here is the standard plug for my plural site course where I use about seven and a half hours to talk in depth about database design and also present a way in which you can find all the functional dependencies without failure. Um, you can find that on Pluralsight. If you don't want to, if you don't want that, then you will have to wait until December. 
This concludes the video. Please, as always, like, subscribe and comment as much as you want. I love getting those. Um, and uh, well, until the next time. My name is Hugo Cornelis. Goodbye.